So what is the flounder run? Now between October and December, and even into January, you have what a lot of people refer to as the flounder run. Now this is when a large group of flounders migrate from the bays and the marshes and the bays and the bay system to the Gulf of Mexico. This happens up here in the northern part of the coast of Texas all the way down to the south. Now I'm going to talk to you on what the flounder run is. We just established that. What you need to do or what it takes to catch these flounder and where can you catch them at. But thanks for coming back to Texas All Water Fishing. I am Ruben aka Funk Soul Brother. Do not forget to subscribe, like, comment, and share. And if you have any, now there's, let me just say, there's no way I could cover all the information in this amount of period of time from my experience and from a lot of other people's own experience. There's just no way you can cover it and try to keep it within a relatively small time frame. So if you have anything to add for myself or any other, other viewers or subscribers, please leave it in the comments below. It's much appreciated by myself and as some of the other viewers because I know when I'm doing my own research, a lot of times I will read the comments in the video that I am watching. Maybe it's a question that I didn't even think about or maybe it's a question that I was having and somebody else answers it for me. So please leave a comment down below if you have any additional information to add or if from your own experience something that has helped you tremendously to hook up to those flounders and as you well know no flounder is my favorite fish to catch and i'm going to shock a lot of people by saying this but i don't eat fish so i i can't remember what a flounder tastes like because i really don't eat fish so forgive me most of my fish are returned back into the ocean so they can be caught by people such as you. But let's get started. Okay, so during this time of the season, during this time of the year of the flounder run, you can catch flounder in larger groups than normal. So you may spend an afternoon fishing and you might catch 5, 10, 15, 20. I've even had people tell me that they had a trip where they caught up to 30 flounder. Now a lot of them, a lot of the flounders may have been undersized or maybe just not the size that they were looking for. So they threw, a lot, they threw most of all those back, keeping their limit, which is right now during the flounder run, the limit is 2. And they have to be at least 15 inches. So you can only keep two, nothing under 15. So what do flounder eat? Well, like most fish in the bays and in the channels and in the salt water, they eat shrimp. I know a lot of people say, well, that's my go-to bait. I use a lot of shrimp. Well, the problem with using shrimp is that everything else eats the shrimp. Whiting, croaker, pinfish. You name it, you're going to have all those type of fish that are just tearing your shrimp apart. So me, my own personal preference, if I am using live bait, I will like, I will use a mullet. I will use live mullet. I've even used dead mullet before and I've had some success, but I just think I got lucky on those particular days and they were just biting on anything. But I have had some friends tell me that they use dead mullet and they just sw simply swim it and try to fish it on the bottom so like you would do an artificial. Now, from my research, because I did do a lot of, I did do some research on the internet just to try to read some information. Maybe there's something that I didn't realize or I could share with you. But one thing I didn't realize is that according to a lot of the experts out there, flounder number one live bait is a mud minnow. Now, I haven't had the level of success using mud minnows like I have using mullet, but that's probably simply because I don't fish a lot with mud minnows. So that level of success or that great number of success where I had a lot of good trips out is a lot smaller than it is from when I have fish with mullet. But to me, mullet is my number one go-to. Now the number one rig that I use is a Carolina rig. It's going to keep that bait on bottom where you typically find your flounder. Now I'll use a two to three size J-hook to put the live mullet on. 
I'm not going to get too much detail when we're talking about tying up the rigs and stuff like that. I'll use that for a later video if you are interested. Now, when it comes to throwing artificials, my number one go-to, and probably the majority number one go-to lure, number one go-to artificial is gope. Gope is heavily scented, and a flounder bite is really based on that scent. A lot of people will throw gopes in tandem rigs. I have just got off the phone with my friend Cody Dunn, and I learned his famous Getter Dunn rig. I'm going to make that a separate video to show you how I tie tandem rigs and how to tie a Getter Dunn rig that he has had a lot of success pulling a lot of flounder out over the years. But, like I said, number one lure would be gope. My number two lure would be the voodoo shrimp. It just looks so great in the water, and the fish just can't resist it. My number one three lure that I've had success recently has been the bite and fight angler. It has done great for me in the marsh system, and I'm going to throw it a lot this flounder season. It has a nice, heavy-scented garlic scent as well. And also, Old Faithful Chicken Boy Lures. I have used Chicken Boy for years. Put some Flounder Pounder scent on it or even a garlic scent out of the Procure stash. And that will make those flounders really strike and latch on like you want them to. Where can I catch them? Now that is the number one asked question to me. People want to know where can they catch flounder during the flounder run. Well, like I said... Flounder are up in the marsh systems, up in the bay system, and they slowly move out into the Gulf of Mexico in their migration. So here is a few well-known hot spots that you can find flounder during this flounder run. Is one of them is the Texas City Dyke. Now I've done a video talking about Texas City Dyke last flounder season. You can find that video in the description below. I'll leave a link there. But a lot of people do. I'm not going to cover too much detail. Just go over this very quick. But a lot of people will wade this area and this area for flounder. You also have the rock formation on this side. Fishing along the rocks along this side. And of course at the end of the dike as well as you have flounder that is exiting our bay system so anywhere along the side really just pretty much anywhere along the side where you can find a spot just throw some throw a line or two or even fish with some of the live bait moving down the chip channel you can also fish and find some flounder at the sea wolf park again it's another hot area right here I've done a video about sea wolf park you can find that in the description below as well but anywhere along these rocks, weight fishing along this side and along this side, I would just say this. Be very careful when you are weight fishing any area at all. I know Siva Park, we're right here. They tend to have a lot of holes. I saw somebody fall and take a dip last season. But here's Siva Park here, and you can see this is about one foot, but there's a lot of holes here. And you can see on this other popular spot to wade fish, how it just completely and totally drops off. You go to about 3 feet to about 17 feet, and you don't want any part of that in that fast current. Switching back over to Google Earth, another good spot to fish is the ferry landing. You have the ferry landing on the island side, and you also have the ferry landing on the Bolivar side which are good spots to fish as well. You just want to place yourself in the route of these of the of the flounder that are exiting the bays. Another great spot to fish along is the the jetties on Bolivar and then the jetties back over here on the island. And like I said, anywhere East Beach, East Lagoon, anywhere along the edge of the chip channel. And then later on in the season, as the flounder start moving in, that's when you start seeing them more and more in the surf. So fishing the rock groins off the seawall is always great. Also fishing off one of the two piers that we have in Galveston. Let me come back down here. 
61st Street Pier is always a great spot to fish as well as for and also 91st Street Pier. It doesn't mean it doesn't mean that you can't catch flounder in the marsh or in our bays throughout the year. You can still catch flounder, but we're talking about targeting flounder during the flounder run. Now, any of these locations, you will find large groups of people. So don't be worried. You will not be alone when you're fishing the flounder run. Just know to be patient, have patience with each other because everybody's just trying to do the same thing. Everybody's just trying to hook up. So I hope you find this information talking about the flounder run and what is the flounder run, where to find the fish and what they want to eat helps you. Now I have a few more videos coming out. I'm going to show you how I tie a tandem rig. The purpose of a tandem rig, I'll show you how Cody Dunn ties his getter Dunn rig. And that's, I saw him throughout the year. I've seen him hook up to a lot of flounder during this summer season and this spring season. So I asked him to show me how to tie his, how to tie his getter Dunn rig and if he mind me showing it with you also i have that video coming out pretty soon as well but if you like what you saw here please hit that thumbs up if you like fishing fishing contents in general push that subscribe button and hit that bell notification button let you know next time i upload a video for everybody else on my regular view subscribers i appreciate you guys coming back and hopefully next time you catch me hooking up and i hope this helps you out there during this flounder run hookup as well. Thanks.